Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can create your own functions in Power Query that you can invoke and reuse over and over again. In this example, I'm going to go over exchange traded funds and specifically ETFs that target artificial intelligence stocks. So the idea being, I'm going to create a list here of different ETFs, add to this list, and then I'm going to do a refresh, Excel updates a list updates a table for me that shows me all the stocks that are held within those ETFs. So the purpose of this is, you know, say you wanted a list of all the possible AI stocks you can think of, you know, add in a bunch of AI related ETFs and, you know, you'll have a pretty, pretty good list to work with if you wanted to look at AI related stocks. So I've got this table already set up here. So I'm going to go to the data tab and select from table or range to load this into Power Query. And so I've got that table in there, but I want to create a function that basically loops through these items and spits out a table of values for me. So there's a couple ways that we can go about doing this. One is creating a function from scratch. Another is creating a separate query and then converting that into a function. It's the same end result, but there's a couple of different ways you can go about doing it. So I'm going to start by just creating a blank query. So if we go to other sources, blank query, and we can go to the advanced editor actually, and create it in here. So how this will work is when we're creating a function, we start with, you know, what we want to call it. So let, let's say get holdings, that's going to be the name of my function, equals and I'm going to put in my variable, which is going to be the name of the ETF, and I'm creating an arrow function, all right? And we're going to have another let keyword in here. And then at the end, it's going to end with in get holding. So it returns back the result of this function. So I'm going to indent this just so it's a bit, just so it's a bit cleaner and easier to see that, um, you know, this code is embedded within my, my function. So once in here, what I'm going to do for the source is I'm going to select web.page and then web.contents. And so what I'm going to do here is enter the URL that I want to use. And for the website that I'm going to use is from stockanalysis.com. So HTTPS stockanalysis.com slash ETF. Close that and now reference my variable, which is ETF. And put that within that URL. So as you can see, we're creating that URL. So it's dynamic enough that it's referencing this ETF value in here because I want it to change every time I've got um, a different ETF. And then for the data, so I'm just following the normal convention that it creates when it's opening up these uh, when it's doing this, um, when it's pulling in data from, from a query, and I'll go through the other method as well. That'll make this a bit easier to follow through in case you're not um, following along here. But basically what it's doing is it's going through these, um, through this through this link, getting that data and pulling it into here. So anytime you're, you're coding with uh, Power Query and creating um, a function, you wanna reference the most recent step when you're in the, after this in keyword. So it's referencing that last piece there. So if I hit done, now you'll see I've got that function here and I'm gonna rename this to get holdings. So I'm gonna go back in here and now I've got to add a column. There's an option to invoke a custom function. So I'm gonna create a new column that's invoking that function. If I do that, now it's going to give me an option for the column name, and I'm going to call this holdings. The query is going to be called get holdings. And you can see I have an option to select the column that I want to reference. Now I've only got, I only have the ETFs column, so that's the only one I'd do. I'd reference. So this is going to go in the place of that variable for the ETF, which is what I want. because so I want that URL to update with these um, different ETF uh, tickers. So I'm going to hit OK. Now it's gonna have my data, some data privacy warnings. So if you set this to public, this warning goes away, basically because you're sending uh, data back and forth. And so 
once that's okay, now we've got a table here. And if I click on this table, you'll see now I've got a list of the symbol, um, the name, the percent weight, the shares for each one of these funds. If I click on these arrows going in opposite directions, that's gonna expand this out. And by default, I just hit leave it as okay. You can uncheck the option for a prefix because we're not really dealing with any complex tables here. We, it's just all coming from the same source. We're not gonna have multiple symbols or multiple names. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And now you see now we've got the ETF, we've got the symbol, we've got the name, all that stuff. And now I can go to home, close and load, and now it's gonna populate this into my spreadsheet. So the cool thing about this now is now I've got this list for all those ETFs. So ROBT, ROBO, so we've got all that, right? So what I could do is, you know, I think XLK, that's the ticker for just general um, tech stocks. So if I got that in, in here, XLK, I can go to data, refresh all, and now what's gonna happen now is it's going to update my list for me. Now if I go to table one, I should see XLK in here, and I do. So the cool thing about that is, you know, just updating this list will trigger a refresh in here, and then I can just see, you know, all the stocks that relate to that specific ETF. So this is based on the stockanalysis.com website. You can obviously use different sources, but I just like the setup of that website and how easy it is to, to change the URLs to get exactly um, the ETF lifts, listings that uh, that you want and you can you can pull into that. So a really easy way to consolidate that in there. Now I'm going to show you another way that you can do this and that's going to involve uh, first creating a query and then converting it into a function. So on the data tab, you'll see an option that says from web. So I'm gonna click on this and here, you know, you could just manually type in the URL, URL that you wanna use. So HTTPS stockanalysis.com slash ETF, let's say ARQ holdings, hit okay. I'm not putting any variables in right now because Obviously, I'm just creating, I'm just referencing a simple URL. And now table zero has my, uh, my, my ticker symbols. And so I can select the option to load, let's say load to, because I don't want to actually load it into this spreadsheet. I just want to load it as a, as a connection. So I'm using the load to option so I can select only create a connection. I'm going to hit okay. And it's got my table zero in there. So I'm going to right click edit this and just so I get back into Power Query. And now this time I'll go back into the advanced editor function. The benefit of doing it this way is, you know, you've got these steps created for you. Power Query's done this work for you. So if you don't know the proper syntax, you can sort of cheat a little bit and let Power Query do that work for you. And now it's just a matter of converting this into a function. And the main thing to remember when you're doing that, you've got to add an extra let keyword and an extra in keyword down here. So I'll start with let, let's say let get holdings equals, got my variable, ETF, arrow function. And now down here, let's close this out and say in get holdings. And now you can see there's no syntax errors anymore because we've got this named range starting out. And you know, optionally, you may want to indent this just to make it a bit cleaner. The one thing that does need to be changed is you, you see the source is still hard coded. I've got ARQ, uh, ARKQ in here. So I want to replace that and say, close the quotation marks and then use the ampersand. And I'm referencing this ETF variable ampersand and then resuming um, the rest of the URL. So exactly the same setup as what I had when I manually did it. But as you can see, it's a lot simpler now that I've got the steps that I wanted. Now I can convert it into a function really easily. Key thing is just making sure I, I set up the function name here. I've got my variable, got my arrow function, and I've got that extra in keyword at the end to reference the circle back to this. Now I hit done. And you know, now I've got two functions. So you can either hard code it or you can go through and manually go through the steps in Power Query and then just go about converting it through the advanced editor. And all that involves is adding a let keyword and an in keyword and then referencing the function name 
and the variable that you want to use. And then, of course, using that variable in any places that need to be dynamic, like in this case, the URL. But this is a fairly straightforward function. I just wanted to show you how you can create um, your own functions in Power Query so that we have the flexibility to do things that are a bit more, uh, bit more advanced than just the standard uh, generic functionality. And you can see just, just by doing this, it's an easy way to pull in you know, something like ETF holdings you know, as, as soon as you've got uh, a URL or a website that, you know, you can easily manipulate to change based on, you know, tickers, you know, it works really easily uh, to pull that into Power Query. You're just really updating the variable for that, for that part of the URL that specifies the, the ticker symbol. So that's how, you know, you can create custom functions in Power Query. Uh, if you want to follow along, I'll have a link related to this video. Uh, linking you to a post on my, my site that falls through these steps as well. So follow along there if um, you need a bit more guidance. But hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.